everyone, and welcome back. We are heading into the semi-finals. We're going to kick it off here with Super JJ versus Saviz. Um, arguably more of the unique lineups left in the tournament here. Saviz has got uh, kind of like just his best creations. You know, he's got like the very aggressive Shaman. He's got like the mid-range Druid. And he's got the very slow and very combo -y driven Priest. And Super JJ also with, uh, you know, bringing his uh, very own creation. So I guess one of them will uh, advance to the final. One of them will have to advance to the final. So we'll have uh, a pretty well-flavored tournament uh, moving forward here. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. I think we have a really good mix of what makes the current metagame very popular, uh, the Druid Shaman. And we also have variants of Shaman. And we have Rogue, uh, that sleeper deck that's, you know, with Oskaka and Super JJ, pretty well represented in the top four. Mm -hmm. And of course, the the top it off the dragons, um, a pretty healthy mix to be honest. The only common denominator that connects everybody is druid, um, but that's just to be expected. So the the reality is, you know, I, I kind of see a lot of these as best of threes. I think the druids are just going to strike them out. So even if it's three one, I still think it in my back of mind is three two because they just probably could have won with druid. Mm -hmm. um, so expect these series to be really really close. Uh, the big difference makers are going to be those third wheels, like you mentioned, the Dragon Warriors, the Midrange Shaman, the the weird control dragon hy hybrid. You know, it's kind of weird thing that Priest is, uh, Savitz is running. I'm not really sure who's exactly favored, but we can go ahead and break down and uh, I'll, I'll throw it to you. Do you pick somebody that's a favorite for this series here? Mm. I, I think Super JJ might be the slight yeah. favorite. His deck seemed very well rounded. Um, Saviz has some very explosive combos, but I, I feel his decks suffer more from inconsistency. Um, the main thing to consider is I actually feel like the Malagos Rogue is more of a third wheel in the mid-range Shaman. The mid-range Shaman has actually been quite dominant from what we've seen. Um, but if you're going to counter mid-range Shaman, Akunai Circle is the way to do it. <laughs> so That's true. Yeah, Saviz kind of has an answer to what I'd consider not the third wheel, but uh, one one of the strongest, most redeeming decks of uh, Super JJ's lineup. Yeah, you know, now that you think about it, back when Midrange Shaman was prominent, I'm, I'm thinking about end of 2014, the, the, one of the hardest counters to that deck was the Priest. It would mm -hmm. have Ball Shadow Priest for any target that you play that was very low attack, like Totems. And you also had uh, AoE, and that was before even Light Bomb really became into a thing, so uh, it definitely was really strong. Plus, Light Bomb's not even that good against Shaman because of all the totems that are zero attack, so it still keeps a lot of that clear. And the train of thought was that in order to beat the the Priest player, you had to have Doomhammer with the double Rock Biters immediately ready uh, and just burst them out of the game. But we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. In the meantime, we have the Rogue versus the Druid. Drew is starting off with the coin and the innervate, but choosing not to go for a, a turn one play just because Rogue is one of the best equipped at dealing with it. It can just sap it. Mm -hmm. Even though we don't uh, see it in the hand, it's the threat of it that's really big. The Blood Mage is great here. Uh, it, it threatens the four damage, which basically counters any innervate play. Um, if you would weapon up first and then you play the Deadly Poison Blood Mage to follow, you'd only have three active damage that turn. So. All right. Well, here I think it's just a weapon up turn. Um, I don't think you'd even deadly poison. You'd want to save deadly poison for the same turn that you'd play the SI combo. Yeah, that makes sense to me as well. Um, you know that there's a lot of shenanigans that can come out on turn three, especially with the relative of the coin. Okay. This is this is okay. Um, the only thing I'm worried is that he can't like deadly poison and eviscerate next turn. So if his opponent innervated out um, some minion, in this case it'd be Drew the Claw or Thorson, uh, he, he'd just kind of be in an awkward spot. Mm. Would you go poison. for the um, Savage Combatant, kill on the SI? Mm, I feel that's a bit weak. Okay. You kind of ha you like as the Druid player, you can't wait forever though. If you wait and wait and wait, you're going to lose. So I think we're going to see kind of an active play. I mean, my first feeling was the Living Roots, hmm. but I feel that's maybe a little bit too slow. I think I would want the Emperor over the Savage Combatant. I mean, the Savage Combatant is still pretty intimidating. Uh, you don't really lose too much. It's just that you you don't really gain that huge effect that Thorazin does. Savitz goes for the slow play. 
that you mentioned. Being able to uh, innervate out Thorsen or even go for the Ancient of War the following turn. And now, as a result, JJ gets an opportunity to set up again. Picks up a three job, pretty crucial. Uh, definitely not the ideal minion, but pretty decent. Uh, here we can go for the Emperor Tharson, which is basically the same position as last turn. Or he can go for the Azure Drake and kill for uh, three damage Living Roots. Looks like he goes for the Emperor. I do think this is the better play. Yeah, but this time he keeps his options much more open. Now next time he can coin the Ancient of War. He has the uh, ability to use Savage Combatant with its hero power. And then Azure Drake still gives the flexibility of using the Living Roots, like you said. So uh, I, I still think it's, it's a pretty okay spot here. All right, Super JJ again goes for the highest tempo play. I, I wouldn't mind the Deadly Poison there. It would set up for a very good Auctioneer to follow. Okay, I think you can... Probably can just go for Ancient of War here. Um, oh, I don't know about that. It, it could get completely wrecked by Sap. You couldn't even play it back. I think I like the the Azure Drake uh, ping for three hero power down the um, uh, the Harrison. Um, well, no, I actually think I like the Savage Combatant better. It accomplishes the same thing, but you don't use your coin, and I think there's value in saving your coin. What do mm. you do? Okay. Yeah. I just think that if he doesn't have it, it's just like a way you can really dom dominate the board early on. But I guess you're right. Like if he had, if he's playing around Sap from like the very beginning, and he's keeping like Thorson as like the threats from the early turn three play, then he's just following his line. I like it. <clears throat> so uh, the thing about here is that you're still very vulnerable. Like you're talking about you're vulnerable to Sap. You just for the same reason he's vulnerable to Eviscerate. So it it accomplishes. Almost the same thing. In fact, it's actually slightly worse because of it. That's a pretty good Emperor. It doesn't really hit any like Malagos pieces, but it does draw you quite a lot. I got the best deals anywhere. So it ends up just drawing, and now it's like it doesn't matter if it was Sap or Eviscerate. The Druid's board is clear now, so it, how, you have to deal with this immediately. Is that a force of nature, or are you just going to? Let that live. You you have to kind of deal with the guy to stand immediately, right? Oh, he wow. picks up a three drop though, so he can innervate the mounted raptor. Also, can choose to go for the savage combatant, although you don't get any immediate value off of it. I think I like the savage combatant better. It'll draw out uh, another point of damage. That's true, but if you don't innervate the mounted raptor, you don't get like proactive behavior with it versus the savage combatant. You can still play it later on and get. Um, the hero power inspire effect. Mm -hmm. And here, I'd be really tempted to Emperor because you're seeing that the Druid is struggling so hard to deal with your board. Seems like the Druid has no reach cards at all. Well, that's a great one to pick up. Yeah, that was um, like pretty good. Um, still had a way to kill off the Thorson, but now you don't. Is that enough mana to play that? Yeah, you can play that and the Savage Combatant. Mm -hmm. Really effective. I think Thorson's gonna be one of the most missed cards when. Oh my God, chicken! <laughs> uh, I think Thorson's gonna be one of the most missed cards when people realize like it's uh, taken out of decks. Just some of the stuff that allows you to do are just so crazy. Yeah. Ooh, another auctioneer. Yeah, but you can't really combo anything too much with it to draw cards. Yeah, it's I a guess. bit early. Ah, uh, but uh, it's like you want to kill that savage combatant because anything else you put out is very vulnerable to it. Yeah, you have to commit it's fine, shit though. deadly to it. No, it's it's not worth doing that. I think you have to uh, kill the chicken with your dagger, uh, heal up, get for three, and then you got the four drop and the three drop at discount price. Mm -hmm. Well, from this point onwards, uh, you know, being able to just be like, like, be able to refill your hand is going to be such a big advantage. You mentioned it earlier with the uh, the fact that Rogue 
doesn't really draw many cards. You don't have a guarantee that your opponent has an auctioneer, so for Savitz, he might think, okay, JJ has just a few cards left, I can outlast him. Although that's he really not needs to get exactly sapped, quite true. He's almost all in on sap. Flurry's not too bad either. In fact, that's Flurry's, true. Flurry's really good. good. Now that he's picked up backside, he also I don't think he actually needs um, to use a second deadly poison, so he can keep that for for the use. Okay, shift so that way he can increase his chances of drawing flurry. Guess sap is sap. good as well. And you know he accounted for sap being a possibility based off his the way he shifts. I like it. Very good, solid planning from JJ. You can tell he's a rogue expert. The flurry one card off. And Sabit's not happy to see that at all. I mean, uh, what do you what do you do? I was gonna keep drawing. Oh, interesting. So he wants to use the coin. Uh, he can also keep Maligos. Uh, so sorry, like keep the coin for Maligos. A so he giant. Can Maligos coin flurry. Yeah. But it's just it's all possibilities. It depends on what he wants. Okay, he ran out of time. I, I'm, I'm curious if he would have changed his play at all, but I think he's accounting for the fact that Savitz might just replay Ancient of War. Mm -hmm. so, the main difference yeah. that I see with, with this rogue and the others is the, the will to save the backstabbed combo with Malagas. It's so good. Mm -hmm. Just like sometimes you have the will. You, it's not even just backstab, but sometimes you just need to save preps too, and you're so tempted to use preps. Um, I think this is where you first. just drop Malagos, right? Like the only way Malagos dies is if it gets full comboed. Yeah, you don't. I don't think you necessarily need to uh, backstab, but you also can. It's it's just one of those things where you want to get extra insurance for board control because you have second sap, so you can deal with the ancient of war. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we wild yes, that's it. Oh. oh, what do you do? It's this over. You never kill in this. Uh, you does he have a silence anymore? In the, he just used one keeper. Did he oh, use? Oh, that's second? right. He can get the other keeper. I mean, four twelve is still intimidating for stats. Oh man, no he thought he may have an out there, but that's just gonna get sapped. How much damage, by the way, is existing? That's uh, ten. 15, 19? No, 20 damage. He can double, he can double Blade Flurry. Oh my god, that might be lethal. It is, I think it is lethal. He can double Blade Flurry. Oh, you're right, double Blade Flurry. You can Flurry. Yeah, you sap Blade Flurry, weapon up Flurry. Yeah, right. The, the double Flurry in a turn is really crafty. And, uh, and that's just gonna be overkill when you account for that. Uh, that Rogue... Again, one of the most fun decks to play, and JJ with a nice little, you know, head crack there motion, just like, yeah, I got you with the chokehold. Wow. Uh, he's pretty, pretty, uh, you know, passionate about playing the rogue deck. Again, he's very much... This deck is kicking ass, man. This deck is kicking it. Like, I, I keep doubting this deck, but it keeps proving me wrong. Well, I mean, uh, if you ever watch JJ stream, he's climbed with it on stream to, like, mm -hmm. rank one legend. It was like, it's, it's definitely a deck that can do it. In a, especially in a metagame where if people are really ex like uh, groaning over paladins, this is one of the better decks which you can capitalize onto that. Alright, well there's going to be the mid-range Shaolin versus the Druid. Uh, so far it has been an excellent Druid Slayer, so uh, we'll have to see how it changes. Savius has a few tech cards that might change that in a big way. The, uh, the mind control tech we, we can see the one there, but I I think there might actually be two in his deck. Am I wrong about that? I don't know. He has Mountain Raptor, so I'd be very surprised if he ran two mind control techs with that. But it, it's a possibility. We'll see. T Double Totem Golem, by the way, one of the best starts that the mid-range jump can ask for. If he just had a Tunnel Trog, uh, that, the start would just be absolutely bonkers. The issue here is, uh, oh, he's not going to go. Wow. Yeah, I like this. Prepping for a turn four play, because he didn't have anything afterwards. Yeah, the swipe would have crushed him. Oh. Whoa. Never lucky. It's too bad. It's too bad. 
Uh, we always talk about the worst case scenarios, and it's usually injured Cavaldir uh, being one of them. Yeah, that's. I'm trying to figure out if that's worse or better than Pitsnay. Whenever you're wondering about that comparison, you know it's really good. Okay. Slightly below average roll, but it's. The only reason why you want a six attack is anticipation for Druid of the Claw. You can just try to remove this, though. Yeah, I think if you do swipe, it's better to use Living Roots for 1-1s one than it is to trade the 2-1. Man, the Living Roots... Thanks otherwise, though. ...really pushing uh, the removal over the top. And now... Now I think Shaman uh, is back to its old ways. You're yeah, where you can't do anything. So you can't play Drake. Um, <laughs> your opponent's going to have dominant board position. Now the Savage Combatant Hero Power... Well, actually, it doesn't clear anything directly, but it's still a really imposing board presence. Mm -hmm. oh, no, this is so hard to, to really catch up from. Okay. Shoots this down. I think he probably trades in the 2 1 as opposed to weaken his. Um, yeah, I would assume so. Keeper. I think the Divine Shield might also be worth pinging off because there's so many buffs in the stack. Well, the good news is that he can't play Fire Elemental next turn, so Savitz feels very comfortable uh, just leaving that 1-1 one, one up on the field. Oh, wow. Interesting. One mana off, though. That overlay. Yeah. Again, problem, you know, just shaman things, right? Mm -hmm. Never enough uh, with some of the mana stuff. And uh, Ancient of Lore... With an Innervate, I mean, that Innervate allows it to clear the, the Drake as well. Oh, especially with the... Uh, uh, now that he has Wrath, he's going to be able to continue to kill off any minion that comes out here. Tough stuff, but this is kind of what the Druid does with Tempo. A Fire Elemental would be pretty good here. Uh, that will do. So you can Lightning Bolt and Hex. Yeah, squeeze in hero power. That's actually good because next turn you have seven mana anyways because it's turn eight, which gives you the availability to use the Thunder Bluff Valiant and mm -hmm. buff it. So if your opponent has all spells, which is mostly true, that's one of the, that's one of the worst draws he could have, but he does have cycle. He's got a cycle. Oh, it's one of the best draws that he's gonna have. <laughs> you just used a hex, so you know this is much safer. Well, oh, goodness got gracious! Thunder bluff and the lightning bolt, right? Right, but lightning bolt is—it's like because the hex frog has taunt. He, it, it's just not very—it's mm -hmm. not perfect. You can't actually remove it. If it was a zero-one token with no taunt, then yeah. There are a few draws that could remedy that well enough, like a Fire Elemental or another Azure Drake would definitely do the trick. Mm, another Azure Drake, you're right. It doesn't look like it, and it's too bad he can't roll multiple spell power totems. He also here powered before he played the Thunder Bluff, so he probably has an alternative plan. It might even just be like Fire Elemental. It's, no, it's going to be Lightning Storm, I think. I'll Lightning Storm, I think, Lightning Bolt. I think he's giving full respect to that minion. Oh, no, we're going to get to see the draw. What is the draw? It is Earthshock. Earth. Okay. Well, it's, it conveniently again works out because there's no real minion. Oh, just kidding. One of the best cards to refill your hand with minions. And uh, Savitz has more where that came from. He's getting closer to killing with Force Nature Savage War the moment he draws it. Shaman mm. just never was able to establish Temple. And look at the card advantage that druid has. Normally it's the opposite. That druid runs out of cards because Shaman outvalues it early on. Yeah, but Ancient Allure is just so insane. Yeah. Ancient Allure is... It's, no, it's better than sprinting. Well, we saw the uh, the Lightning Storm stealing off. Oh, here we go. Roll a, another Air, air of Wrath totem. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Not bad, though. The life gain is going to be significant. Restores four at the end of your turn? Yep. So you go up to 21. Mm -hmm. So that puts you out of Force of Nature Savage Roar range. Barely. 
Oh, no, Mind controlled it? tech. Oh, oh man. That is the icing on the cake. Into this locator. <laughs> Give taunt. Yeah. That's a nice taunt totem you have. That's my taunt totem now. Is this priest? Kind of. I mean, you thought you can escape the. If you think that's bad, shaman, just wait. Just wait till Savitz busts out the priest one. again. Right, Dominant board player. position. Another lightning storm is what uh, JJ it's needs. It's gonna have to be like a spell damage lightning storm. So he needs Drake into spell into lightning storm, basically. Mm, yeah, yeah this is it's pretty it's grim it's here. You. Um, there's ten plus ten. I think he's three off lethal. I think he's one off lethal, but he doesn't. Uh, oh, okay, never mind. That's that's, yeah, more, that's, that's more life than you can have. I, I think, think that's like 40 damage or so. I'd go like 34 or something. Yeah, probably. You're, you're closer to that. It's uh, Looks like we had a little bit of a spicy, but we made it, guys. We we saw the game in its entirety. Um, so that's a 1-1 score, and oh, wow. we're going to get ready for game three. Crypt's still calculating how much damage that was. Do we have, do we have a final tally? 32. 32. Good guess. You were pretty yeah. close. Um, so we have the Shaman remaining from Savitz. I wonder if he feels like that's the time to play it. Um, mm. I would like to do a Priest because I really wanted to hit the opposing Shaman. I think... Yeah, you want the Priest to hit the Shaman. You want the Shaman to hit the Druid if you're Savitz. I, I How don't do you make that happen? The, yeah, I don't want the, that mid-range Shaman to escape with a win killing my... Or if I'm Savitza, uh, killing the aggro shaman. I don't, I don't want it to have potential. Even though aggro shaman I still think has got the edge. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just one of those things where you want to pick the best chance that you have. Uh, and you already escaped one of your worst matchups for the druid. So worked out okay. All right. So going to game number three. JJ once again on the shaman and Savitz. Picks up the, uh, the 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 dragon priest, but he chooses not to play anything turn one because he doesn't have any dragon synergies if he drops yep. the twilight whelp. Are you not to mention the twilight whelp itself uh, would also be a two one. All right, well it's gonna be totem golem into totem golem. That's gonna be a really big deal here. I don't think there's any reason to attack with anything. Even the divine shield is worth saving. Yes. Also worth noting is the positioning on how things are. Like, it's, it's pretty important foundationally for how things go. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you're gonna accept the tunnel trog's probably going to die. I think so. I think you're accepting that well enough that you're going to initiate its death. Right there it goes. <laughs> May it rest in peace. It was a good trog. Twilight Guardian. I mean, this is again. Um, this is a really, really good opener from the priest yeah. too. By the way, it's not. This it's is not like always best, happening best this on way. Both. But you know, the shaman's keeping up in, in pace, kind of sneaking in a little bit of damage here. At best, it can snipe only one minion with the Blackwing Corruptor. Unless it draws Circle of Healing, which it would be devastating for the shaman. Yeah, I think Akunai is so good, you'd probably want to save that uh, until you get a circle of healing, but that flash heal might be Flash heal pretty nasty. Yeah. Oh, with that Rock Biter, I think JJ will just hero power with it because he wants to save his mana for Fire Elemental. And the more he can start totening now, the more the Thunder Bluff Valiant gets value as the yep. game goes on. Absolutely. You are somewhat scared of the Cabal Shadow Priest, but less so now, because you have Fire Little Mental to answer the, the wolf. Oh my goodness. There okay, it is. I think you can just sit on that for a while. Yeah, definitely. I'm actually uh, not positive there are Cabals in this Priest deck. Um, I think a lot of the G2, um, G2 players had double Cabal. I kind of skewed our opinion of that a little bit, but I'm not, I'm not convinced that's actually the case for the other Priest decks in the tournament. I'd be pretty surprised if he doesn't have at least one. Uh, you could be right about the the 
having um definitely not having two but yeah anyways this is completely devastating if you're a super jj you're just like oh god one damage or one mana five damage and he also kills off your minion yeah that's pretty rough yeah it's gonna get even more rough after he sees the second one there is a lot at stake. Mm. How's this gonna work? You you don't really want to use the uh, the circle of healing here, but it's yeah, not bad. Not unless you have to. You can get away with the flash heal. It's a bit risky though. It's, yeah, it is a little bit risky because um, you you don't want Shaman to have any spell power totem or anything like that. So it's okay. He's willing to commit both of these alchemize. Which means if he's able to kill them both, okay. He is. He's able that's to play every card in his hand right now. Yeah, that's kind of a big deal. Because now the access to the second circle of healing is not going to be that relevant. Uh, yeah. for, it's, it, I mean, the train of thought is that you have to really sit on these AoE so that way you can pick your battles and, and make sure that you can keep clearing the shaman board. Mm, man. Yeah, if only that frog could attack, it'd be great. I, I guess you can attach the power shield onto the Northshire Cleric. Yeah, I think he's just scared to do that. I think he wants to play the Cleric when he knows he can draw for sure. It is out of range, and Super JJ has no hand. But you know there's a lot of, um, a lot of cards that allow the Shaman to push for a little bit more damage than you can see. And the Savisa gives full respect for uh, every draw, basically. Oh man. If only he had the sequence of the other way and being able to get the power shield, but he's yeah, gonna he pass. To this. He has to save this. Yeah, pass it correctly. Wow, such draw. a good draw. You know, one thing that we did ask is what does JJ top out at? Whoa. Is it so, I mean, those are if that that could be the two most expensive cards in this deck. I have to imagine that he's also running a few other late game cards. But maybe I'm wrong because he's trying to curve out really aggressively early, so he doesn't lose too much. But he still lacks that big finisher that we're waiting for him. So he's going to have to draw into another way to clear the board, or this game is done. Wow. He's going to start losing very quickly. Yeah, he might have end up playing that Akanai a little bit too aggressively here. I mean, it's one of those things where, where don't you wish you had the circle of healing combination right around now? All right, well, that poor draw from Super JJ, I think, is going to warrant a Fire Elemental to face. Or he might just ride it out. You are um, winning. Hmm. Well, you know, okay, you know Priest doesn't have Light Bomb. You know they don't have that access to Circle healing, circle of healing with Akanai. I think you're completely okay pushing for the win here by going to the Fizz. All right, well, that enables the Shadow or Death, which is another spell for the Wild Pyromancer, which... Um, if he gets another, oh, he does. That's oh, it. That's a full clear. Oh, oh, oh. oh no, it's one off full clear. He can't. He can't kill the the Drake. The Drake yet. Right, but he already used one power word shield, and he can't really like circle of healing. We'll see. I mean, there's gonna be some big fireworks happening in just a sec. Pulls out the Twilight Whelp. Uh, I, I guess that's minion follow up. Mm -hmm. Which is nice. Oh man, the Jason's covering his mouth. He's like, "Don't do this, not my board." He's gonna go with the with the North Shark Flash Heal on the uh, Pyromancer, and then he has another card draw for a, a final spell. He's looking for the last oh, Power man. Word Shield for the last. Uh, no Circle Heal won't do it. He's looking for the last Power Word Shield. Oh, he's gonna try to taunt, but that's gonna be devastating. Oh my oh. gosh. Oh no, it's this, just, this is going to end so badly for Savis. Non stop swings. There oh. we go. He does it. Okay. Well, um. Got a smork it. Are you still going to. Are you going to play Lightning Storm? Yep. Just go for it as hard as you can. Oh, oh, rolls a three! Oh man. 
Yeah. Which Just come... shaman things, bro. <laughs> Just shaman things. Gosh. Now there's two taunts in the way. And there's possibly uh, a game ending dis uh, pot like like lockout. Like priest can just keep healing. Yeah, it's like taunt, and taunt, and heal here. Yeah. We're gonna need a good old fashioned elemental destruction. That's the way you can get through here. But even then, if you do, you destroy your own Drake. Mm hmm. I think you start healing yourself. Um, there's no reason not yeah. to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And th this is the thing, like, Shaman could sometimes just not kill the priest, and like, that's why you've seen the old school styles of control priests just play super defensive. There's no rush for them. They can just wait. All right, this has to come out as a seven six. Well, I guess six six is okay as well. Nope. <laughs> Shaman. Oh. oh, JJ. You know what? I mean, it's one of those things where this is. This is what you kind of have to expect. Sometimes you're gonna get that roll. Sometimes you're gonna get the really good ones. I think it's safe enough to play there. Oh, definitely. And now uh, JJ needs to hit another draw into a hex to just start getting back here. That's just not gonna do anything. I mean, I wonder how long, how much longer JJ will stay. Try to get punch in three to rods. Nope, never lucky. This is like me playing like one of those train wreck arena games. Well, it's, it's happened to everybody where just n nothing goes right. Cabal Shadow Priest is in Savitz's deck. He's gonna steal Let this Flame Song totem, and the, the, like the really excruciating thing is, it's not even like Priest is trying to BM. It just can't really win yet. It's just gonna take <laughs> three more turns. And it's like, I'm sorry, man. Like, I'm really trying it. I just can't. Okay, maybe he can win in two turns now. Uh, yeah. All right, GG. That's gonna be two one for Saviz. We might have another finalist here, but Super JJ still has one more chance. He has to kill the mm -hmm. Agro Shaman from Saviz. Uh, he's done it once with both of these decks before on stream. So I'm I'm feeling, I'm still feeling like, uh, you know, our, our German player here has more than a fighting chance to to take this. Absolutely, I. I... I don't know about the Druid, I think the Druid is maybe a little bit unfavored, but I do think the mid-range Shaman works very well against uh, against the Agra Shaman. Shaman has the Harrison, doesn't it? Did we see Harrison? I want to say yes. No, we saw yeah, Harrison from the Rogue. It was in the Rogue deck. I don't think we've seen it in the Shaman deck yet. No, I think you think he might be right on the Shaman. It might have it. Hmm. And if so, then that is going to be pretty devastating. Tunnel Trog, start things off for uh, Savitz. No play until he picked up that totem oh, goal. Really good. No. Oh. Fantastic. Oh no, it's going to be the coin lava burst. <laughs> yeah, but what other choice did he have? Well, just lightning bolt. Uh, I guess you're right, but... I think you have to play for that board. Like normally, even yeah. if he plays the, uh, even if he plays the coin feral spirits, you got. Oh, it. that's hey, good. Look. That works out excellent. Yep. And now Savitz has to answer that with his own play, which is probably just rock biter. Yeah, he he's got to use the rock biter. It it sucks to use rock biters, but with two, you can afford one, I think. Which means JJ takes the board lead. Feral yep. Spirits by itself is pretty good. And Earthshock is very good as well. You can uh, Flame Tongue Totem behind both of these taunts and Earthshock next turn. Put this apple on your head. Alright, the oh, Knife Juggler and the Lepernome shoots face. Don't think that's what he wanted. Is he going to use another Rock Biter to just clear some of these wolves? Wow. Painful. Yeah, there goes like the burst. Well, there's still bursts, just no, not the kind of burst that, uh, not the kind of. I burst like that the rock just... biter here. I like the uh, the frost wolf killing the the lepernome and the rock biter killing the juggler. I yeah, think I that's definitely not... want the hero power for sure. You have flame tongue totem, and it's gonna get better next turn by having two targets. Let's do it. 
I think you're right, by the way. Super JJ might not have Doomhammer. We've seen his deck a few times already to the point where I'm I'm actually pretty skeptical myself if he has that as his late game option. But I surely he has more than just Phyla on the top, right? I mean, it's, it's a possibility he doesn't, but... No, I think, I think he's just playing a, basically a mid-range deck. Uh, mid-range decks, especially ones without heals, kind of suffer from attrition. So uh, the Doomhammer actually doesn't help with that, because even though Doomhammer looks like a very good way to clear out minions and maybe push for damage, um, I've tried it in like a lot of mid-range Shaman decks, and very frequently it just doesn't work. Get in there and fight, man! Okay. Just loading up the board, but this is the Revenge of Super JJ. Look at that Flame Tongue Totem value. Followed by a... Uh... Fire Guard Destroyer. Yep. I mean, that's a pretty legitimate threat. Mm hmm. It's going to be at least a six attack minion when you place it to the left of the flame farm. Whoa. Extra wow. attack. Who would have thought? I will right, well, here. Okay, I guess you're looking for a spell damage totem. Oh, he has God. to give up. Oh, man. Let's see. Lightning Storm? Hex isn't bad. This is one of the biggest minions you'll end up hexing. But Drake is just a lot better, yeah. Wow, there it is. Yeah, Lightning Storm was... It's okay if you don't have it this turn. Well... <laughs> well he's just gonna actually, sit on it. He's and willing here's to take like, two extra damage. Here's like an interesting, yeah, it, it, I think it's okay. Here's like a, because he, he knows the rock biters are out of the equation. Mm -hmm. One of the fascinating things is now Savitz is in a position where he might have to play control styles because he's just really intimidated by the board. Um, so he'll definitely want to kill at least a flame tongue totem off. But does he use a lava burst defensively? I mean, that's that's one of the questions. He's, gonna, he's hovering over the Argent Horse Rider, indicating that he wants to be slightly more proactive onto the board. I don't like that. I think you should have gone face. I think that's your only way to win this game. Playing the control game is oh, exactly man. the way you're you're going to lose. Oh, devastating! Oh, they doesn't even need the uh, spell power totem. And that's going to be a, a, a almost a two turn lethal setup here for JG. He's a couple points short. Mm -hmm. Uh, unless Savitz has Elemental Destruction, that can halt things straight in the tracks. For now, he's going to need to roll Spell, spell Damage Totem is clear, yeah. No. It's a little bit off. Well. If you get a Spell Damage Totem next turn, it's not quite enough, is it? It's 13. You get another 6 damage. You're gonna have to come up with. Yep. And on the flip side, spell power totem doesn't end it for uh, for JJ either. You only got 14 in that case. You have 15, but yeah, that's still not enough. Oh man, I, I'm not envious of Savisa's position at all. Might just end up passing here. Really calculating all of his damage, all of his outs. Uh, I don't think he can pass. Because you can't win next turn. If you can't win next turn, you... Okay. Oh, well, Drake doesn't give it direct lethal. But actually, I don't think he can have lethal now. Because he can't roll spell power. Through. I think he has a rock biter left in the deck. That oh, you're right. Lethal. You're right. The two rock biters were the opposite side. I'm thinking you just... Uh, play the totem golem and just go for it. You choose the earth shock so he can get maximum damage to the opponent. So close. One damage off. He's looking for elemental destruction. Is there, uh, is there something that can save him though? I don't think so. Hunter hero power is great, but... Not, not enough. Enough. He needed the extra damage because right now he's only got two, four, seven. 
And he's just gonna ping himself. What a crazy game. Once again, the Shaolin. That was mighty honorable of Saviz there. Taking himself out like that. Yeah, definitely. But we're going to game five uh, in a pretty fast and blistering pace here. Uh, JJ is one game away from once again being able to potentially upset with this mid range shaman. However, Savitz also has that very uh, interesting priest deck that's been carrying him so far. He's going to need that aggro shaman to do some work on the druid. The two iconic classes, which has reigned terror over this format. Mm -hmm. The druid has been more successful than the shaman, but um, most of the shaman's success has been from killing druids. So it's. Uh, <laughs> It's an interesting one. It's definitely a very close matchup. It looks like the opener from the Druid is considerably better than that of the Shaman, though. And uh, I think out of the gate, it's uh, looking uh, like it might be favored towards Super JJ. Yeah, we'll see. The Darnest Aspirin is really powerful to stop the early game aggression. Really forces, uh, really forces the Shaman to react strongly to it. Well, you really can't. He's got to just go face. Hope that your opponent doesn't have yet a very good response to it. Living Roots is usually like one of the ways that you have to, you're just going to hate your life. Mm -hmm -hmm. You have a couple of options here. It, it depends on how much damage you want to take to your own face uh, or if you want to draw with Wrath. Well, I like the, Wrath. Uh, yeah. But the uh, the tournament has moved in the direction of if it's two damage, you face it. But Leopard is not true two damage. It's actually four. Yeah, but you only face two. Hmm. Yeah, it's true. Hmm. But it's, uh, it's, I mean, the reason why is also you want to conserve Wrath for other targets later on, like... Like, for example, Feral Spirit's coming up here. Well, Trog's behind taunts. There's, there's quite a few things. JJ has to go for Wild Growth here. Now, Wild Growth, what it does is it guarantees him the ability to play something like uh, the... the Savage Combatant on four mana. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, well, he's got to go with the Feral Wolves um, so he cannot be overloaded on his fifth turn in order to Doomhammer on five. You want to Doomhammer as fast as possible. So Feral Spirits are going to try and start pushing on the board a little bit, but I don't really foresee... Oh, interesting. I was going to say, I don't foresee uh, anything, anything other than Savage Combatant coming down, but... I still uh, like Savage Combatant coming down. It, it is interesting. You do get to save four health this way, but Savage Combatant is pretty proactive. It's like forcing the wolves to address it as well. Mm -hmm. Just so happens that uh, it can with a lava shock. Yeah, lava shock is a great answer here. Would you double lava shock just to preserve your board? I yep. consider it. Yeah, more damage. You get more one term. extra repet. Yeah, you get one extra repetition of attacks from the uh, the wolves. Yeah. Assuming assuming it's not uh, blocked by any taunts, but not the case here. JJ picks up the Azure Drake. Yeah. Okay. Wrath. Well, here comes the damage. Well, there's some chance that Doomhammer kills the Drake here. Takes eight. Kind of doubt it, though. Oh. Yeah, I've seen those plays before. Um, if you really want to get a little bit more out of your wolves, because when you trade the eight health, it's because you want to do the... You're trading four damage, believing that you'll have more damage out of your wolves in two turns. So Yeah. If you think these wolves can attack two more times, then it's worth it. And I think that's a reasonable expectation. I wonder. Hmm. Okay. You know, what What I don't mind about it is that uh, on six mana, your opponent is still not really making power plays. Uh, Force of Nature's not really that good. Like, Swipe Wrath takes the entire mana. Mm. JJ, now is he going to Wraths? It's like one of those things where he had the option a few turns ago, but unfortunately he's been trying to play the minion curve and just been answered every single time. 
Yeah, well, these minions don't do anything anymore. I would even consider uh, Swipe Wrath. What to do? Okay. So, JJ, uh, Savitz didn't get the two attacks with the wolves, but what he did get was a, pa a, t a past turn, effectively, yeah. uh, from Super JJ, giving him uh, a very strong ability to answer back right now. Oh, he only has four mana, though, because the Doomhammer charged two. Okay, uh, so that's all right, only... though. Yeah, but I think it'd be so much better if he was able to play Knife Juggler uh, with something else. Uh, sorry, oh, with the, there's uh, a rock biter though. It looks like this is uh, closing in on Saviz's match here. All right, Saviz just a, a turn away. There is lethal on board right now for Saviz. I think if you're JJ, you definitely want to swipe this. The alternative is to force nature, but I think force nature gives up your win. Um, I think right now he's just going to bank on swiping, playing uh, the big game hunter, so that way he can interface combo next turn. That's his. That's his line. He's going to need to do it. And right now, Savitz is one damage off. Still one damage off. Yeah, he doesn't have it. Sir Finley trying to dig a little bit deeper. This is a hero power pool. Shapeshift? Why not? Gives you two damage this turn. I like it. You can even play the um, the Rock Fighter now so you can get guaranteed of all the burst. 12 damage. Yeah, and that Now that Druid combo. hero power, he's out of range of the Force of Nature Savage Roar. Oh man. Oh. oh my god. That's a draw. That that's that's the only draw that he could have gotten right now to stop stall it like this much. I mean, even the um and I think you you have to hurry up. Like you leave that that murloc on the board. You don't give you don't give a crap about the murloc. Yeah. It's time to go. That is crazy. And what is that? Is that a shark? Oh, oh shark. Shark. <laughs> oh, speeds. This pumps, he's going to the finals. Super JJ's epic run with the mid-range shaman lineup is just gonna get cut short. A little, uh, you know, polite laugh there out of, uh, you know, a little whimsical laugh, if you will. I think JJ's been in that position too many times. Yeah, so but we also the last decide, laugh uh, in the battle of the top uh, decks there. Yeah, that was a great ending. <laughs> that was an insane ending. Man, all right, so Saviz will be our first finalist. Um, his, uh, his, uh, Challenger is not yet placed. If we look at the brackets, uh, we see that the semifinal between Oskaka and Tice has yet to be played again. How about that? Oskaka and Tice. That was uh, perhaps the most memorable matchup of the uh, the World Championships of uh, 2015. And uh, here they are again with a little bit of an intro to what uh, the future of tournament play might be like soon enough. That's right. So Savitz, with that win... Uh, guarantees himself $7,500. That's a $5,000 shock uh, off the top of his deck. And I guess we got our answer. Savitz uh, is going to be our first finalist, awaiting another BlizzCon semifinals, just like you said. So, guys, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to have our uh, second semis. You're watching the Curse Trials, presented by Geek Fuel, Curse Network, Hearthpone, and the Innkeeper. We'll be right back, guys.